Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Native News Update. It's Friday, January 25th. Many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. Attawapiskat Chief Teresa Spence's 44-day hunger protests officially ended January 24th after Aboriginal and opposition leaders came together to forge the 13-point declaration of commitment to pursue First Nations issues. The declaration commits signatories to seek immediate improvements to native housing and education. A meeting of First Nations chiefs, the Prime Minister and Crown, and a full implementation of treaty and Aboriginal rights within five years. A chanting drumming crowd greeted Chief Spence at the downtown hotel after she left the hospital where she had been kept overnight for observation. She thanked family, friends, and supporters for their backing during the six weeks she spent on Victoria Island just upstream from Parliament Hill. Spence's fast was an absolute victory, her spokesman said. Even though she didn't achieve a long-demanded meeting between the Prime Minister, Governor General, and First Nation leaders, we have achieved victory, her spokesperson said at a news conference Thursday morning, marking the end of the Ottawa Piscot Chief's hunger protest. Our grassroots people have been awakened. The National Congress of American Indians is calling for immediate action on the Violence Against Women's Act as members of Congress weigh newly introduced legislation in both the House and the Senate. NCAI is pointing to the support of key Republicans with tribal constituencies in both the Senate and House who are supporting the newly introduced measures or similar measures in the past with key protections for Native American women. The Violence Against Women's Act, first passed in 1994, provides funding and services for victims of domestic violence. The act also established new penalties for crimes related to domestic violence and violence against women, including interstate domestic violence and increased penalties for repeat sex offenders. Rates of domestic violence has decreased over 50% since VAWA was first passed. VAWA expired at the end of 2012 after passing with strong bipartisan support in the Senate last Congress. First American Capital Corp Procurement Technical Assistance Center, better known as Tribal PTAC, will be holding their second annual Growing Your Business with Government Contracts, January 28th and 29th, in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The Regional Conference for Rural and Tribal Businesses is an event where tribal leaders and Indian-owned business leaders can come to the table and do business with the federal government. Tribal PTAC, which is located on the Oneida Nation Reservation in Wisconsin, has a huge service area that includes Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, Iowa, New York, Massachusetts, and Maine. Program Director Gwen Carr expects this year's regional conference to be the largest gathering of federal agency representatives and federal contractors in the Midwest. The theme of the conference is when preparation meets opportunity. For more information, you can check out their website at faccptac.com. About 2,800 groups applied to be a part of the 57th inaugural parade, which was held on January 21st. The Presidential's inaugural committee chose 60 that embodied the theme of this year's inauguration, Our People, Our Future. Of the 60 groups chosen, six were from Indian Country. The Native American Women Warriors from Colorado are the first Native American Women Warrior Color Guard, all veterans, all proud of their ancestry and the nation they serve. The group includes all ranks and branches of the service. They promote diversity and equality in the military and on reservations. Other indigenous groups included the dancers from the Inupit community in Alaska, dancers and drummers from the Wind River Reservation, the Kamahamahe School Warrior Marching Band and Color Guard from Honolulu, Hawaii, the Native American Tribes of North Dakota, which is a group of veterans and students who are working to engage Native Americans in politics in their state, and the Navajo Nation Band.
two well-known Comanche tribal members were the host ambassadors on January 21st for the Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indian inauguration celebration for the re-elected President Barack Obama. Comanche tribal members George Tadu Hanapa and LaDonna Harris served as honorary co-chairs for the event honoring Obama for his second term. The event was at the museum and highlighted the self-determination of Native American nations. Harris is the founder and president of Americans for Indian Opportunity. She gained national attention in 2012 when she adopted actor Johnny Depp into the Comanche Nation. Tadu Hanapa is slugging his way to national attention. He signed a star boxing in July. The undefeated NABA USA middleweight champion with a 31-0-1 record will get his first big show February 15th when he'll battle world-ranked junior middleweight contender Delvin Rodriguez at the Mohican Sun Casino Resort in Connecticut. Former talk show host, media producer, and philanthropist Oprah Winfrey was in Canada this week with stops in Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver. The inspirational evenings with Oprah included personal and professional stories about her life and career. As Oprah traveled across Canada encouraging guests at her events to not forget the whispers, First Nations were singing and dancing outside the venues in support of the Canadian movement Idol No More in hopes that Oprah would take notice. Billed as an evening with Oprah Winfrey, with a lady who is easily one of the most influential and wealthy women in the world, the program was intended to inspire audience members to take control of their own lives and be able to reach their full potential. In solidarity with everything Oprah is said to stand for, all First Nations desire is for their voices to be heard, their treaties to be honored, and their waters to be protected. With that said, we ask Oprah, did you hear the whispers of our children as they sang and danced for you in the support of Idol No More? If so, don't let their sacrifices be in vain. Don't forget the whispers. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.